Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to the first match of the quarterfinals of Speed Chess Championship 2020 online tournament organized by chess.com platform. Now, um, I would like to show you one of the games between Jan Krzysztof Duda and Wesley So. Jan Krzysztof Duda won 17 to 9 against Fabiano Caruana and he qualified to the quarterfinals and Wesley So won 18 to 10 against Nodirbek Abdusatorov. Uh, and now, First uh, three games, after first three games, Duda started to win two and a half to half. So he got the two wins, one draw. Um, then Wesley, so I think he won um, and then uh, Duda won again. So uh, he was winning three and a half to one and a half. Uh, but at the end of the first section, five minutes and one second incrementation, uh, it was 4-4. Four, four. Um, and then uh, they started to play three minutes and one second incrementation. And we got the very interesting information from Robert Hess. Statistics say that Wesley So is probably the best three plus one player in the world. He has a better statistic than Magnus Carlsen and then Hikaru Nakamura and so on. So uh, definitely in three plus one, he was the favorite. So all Jan Krzysztof Duda had to do was not losing by the big margin. That's a very simple strategy, however, not easy against Wesley So. Uh, of course, Jan Krzysztof Duda is also extremely strong, but if he don't lose, if he draw this section, three plus one, then in bullet, he was definitely a favorite. So um, that was maybe the, his strategy, maybe not. Now, um, Wesley So started really great because he got the lead two points ahead. Uh, and then this is one of the games, probably decisive game and one of the most beautiful and exciting games with a couple of motives where all of us um, can learn. We can learn a lot of um, from that game. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. So we have d4 by Wesley So, and knight f6, c4, g6, and now g3. So King's Indian defense and immediate fianchetto variation. Uh, we have c6, bishop g7, of course, is also playable. We have c6, creating this um, powerful pawn chain just to face this dangerous bishop. This bishop can be very, very annoying. We have bishop g2 as planned, and now d5. Uh, we have knight f3, we have bishop g7, uh, we have castle, castle, so uh, now we transpose actually to Neo Greenfield defense uh, and this is the classical variation of a uh, Neo Greenfield and here white actually could go for the most popular uh, exchange variation here C takes on D5, C takes on D5, Knight C3 and then black have a choice uh, go for the Knight C6 uh, symmetrical variation or maybe make some unbalanced uh, position, unbalanced pawn structures with the, with the Knight E4. So all of that is of course possible part of the theory but here actually Wesley so was the first uh, who want to make some imbalance and he played knight e5. Uh, Duda answered with knight g4 saying okay let's exchange some pieces and Wesley so said okay but let's complicate that a bit so we have c takes on d5, knight e5, d takes on e5 and now how to continue. Uh, there are two ways of continue take one of the pawns but which one and how. So if bishop e5 it was played a couple of times then we would have something like knight c3 and after exchanging, uh, the pawn structures are completely symmetrical, probably knight c6, then bishop g5, and it's quite sharp here with the with the knight and the bishop pointing on the on the e7, but this is of course uh, part of the theory and it's well-known variation. Uh, but we have something else. Here we have c takes on d5, so it's a more safe variation. Now we have bishop d5, bishop e5, everything is pretty much symmetrical, knight c3, and two minutes on the clock for Duda and three minutes for Wesley. So why? Because Jan Krzysztof Duda was thinking about this move, how to continue. So knight c6, we have one game in the database which was drawn. Of course, it looks like everything is pretty much symmetrical. However, Duda went for queen b6. Uh, and this uh, move is um, creates some a lot of very interesting complications. Now, first of all, the queen focus on b2. So now it looks like this bishop shouldn't move from there, but also the queen stays on this diagonal. So in some variations, white have to be very, very careful. For example, cannot push this pawn uh, because the pawn on g2 
tree would be uh, hanging. So there are a couple of ideas here. Uh, however, now Wesley so went for bishop h6, setting up very, very interesting trap. Now, how to react? What would you play in this position? Your rook is under attack. What would you play here? The point is rook d8 is a really bad move because after bishop e3, the queen has to be moved. Uh, and for example, queen b2, then we're gonna have this problem. Bishop f7, uh, king f7, then queen d8, and black are in uh, serious, serious tr troubles, even cannot take this, this knight, okay? Cannot take this knight just to defend the bishop. The problem is rook a to c1, and then, then this bishop gonna be lost, and the queen and the rook uh, on the eighth rank, this is just disastrous for black. So, uh, very, very tricky position. This is why Duda retreat, bishop g7, we have bishop g7, king g7, and now rook c1, normal developing move. Uh, uh, and here uh, commentators in studio said, okay, maybe play bishop h3. It looks like pretty much natural with tempo and then develop what can go wrong. So what could go wrong is actually knight a4, uh, leading to very complicated variation. Now the queen has to go somewhere. So for example, queen b5. Uh, and then queen d4 with check, king g8, let's say, uh, and knight c3 attacking the, the queen. And now if queen takes on b2, then we have rook b1. And look at this. The problem with this bishop, he, it's, it was still guarding the, the b7 square. So it's a very, very tricky position. For example, queen e3, then bishop b7 is coming. Uh, bishop f1 exchanging, king f1, knight d7, then exchange. And after rook a8, queen d7, queen c3, actually white wins one pawn. Very, very complicated, but at the end of the variation, white actually stands slightly better with extra pawn. I should be very comfortable actually to play for white. Very natural move like bishop h3 with tempo, but actually without tempo uh, can be very, very tricky as well. So young Krzysztof Duda prefers to keep the bishop for now and in the right moment, maybe bring the knight to c6. How difficult is that? Let's see. We have rook d8 first because young Krzysztof Duda, of course, see this bishop, the queen behind. So why not to pin? Why not to play e6? We have knight a4 now kicking the queen. Uh, and this is also very, very tricky because now, for example, if the queen moves to, to a5, it's very, very natural. Still keeping an eye on the bishop. There is the tactic here. Boom, rook c8. And after rook c8, bishop b7 and white is winning the game. Okay, winning the exchange and the game. So this is why we have queen before, still keeping an eye on the on the b7, but now a3, kicking the queen. Where to move the queen? We have queen g4. So young Krzysztof Duda watch all the uh, geometry of the of the board, and now he is defending the, the bishop on c8. Very beautiful move. And after 30 seconds, Wesley so actually decided to play f3. So Duda has one minute on his clock and Wesley so one minute and 20 seconds. So not so bad so far. Uh, actually, Duda played this uh, middle game quite fast. Uh, at the beginning, he had uh, really some problems with the time. Uh, lost one minute, but now it's um, everything okay. Uh, and then queen d7. So queen, of course, uh, was kicked. And now, um, of course, e6 doesn't work like it should. So we have queen d4. Uh, Wesley so uh, delivers a check. We have f6 and now rook f to d1. So the idea is to bring extra defenders to the bishop. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna be lost. Of course, now the queen is also defended. But it looks like actually Jan Krzysztof Duda can place now e6. And exactly this is what he played. Now what to play? You cannot move the bishop because you gonna lose the rook. OK, so this is very tricky. Now, the engine suggests that white has a winning move. But it's very difficult to spot because the winning move is actually bishop e4. This is the winning move for the engine. And the point is that after queen d4, rook d4, rook d4, there is rook c8. And also this bishop is coming for b7. Not much can be done here. Only the rook can take the, the, the for example, the knight. And after bishop b7, knight c6. 
bishop a8, uh, knight e5, and the game continues. Uh, and white has again only one pawn. However, the engine says that it's plus 2.7. So this is a very, very strong position for, for white pieces. So uh, this way, bishop e4, not easy to actually find that continuation. Uh, but Wesley so has another move. Knight c5, according to Stockfish, this is the blunder. However, it's not really. Jan Krzysztof Duda plays the best move in the position. Queen f7, Stockfish still stay, says, okay, uh, black has a winning position here. And now this is the time to pause the video and find the, actually the very nice continuation, couple of moves, uh, which gonna be very, very attractive for white. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So if you, for example, would like to take that, that pawn because the bishop is lost, okay? The bishop is lost, uh, but you can maybe uh, exchange the queen somehow. So bishop e6, then the problem is after rook d4, bishop f7, we have this rook d1 with check. And after rook d1, king f7, and then what happened? Black has one extra piece and uh, white doesn't have any plans. So for example, rook d8, knight c6, attacking the rook, the bishop is defended, all is fine with the position. So that doesn't work. Wesley so found knight e6, knight e6. This is the move we are looking for. Now, what is the difference? This is the huge difference because this is check and this is actually also attack on the rook. So it's very nice fork. Uh, and now bishop e6 is forced. So we have bishop e6 and now after bishop e6, rook d4, there is the huge difference because after bishop f7, rook d1, rook d1, king f7, Wesley so ended with the rook d8. Boom! Without the bishop on c8, this is the huge difference. Now, I would like to just stop for the moment because this year, Wesley so actually played during the Lindores Abbey Online Challenge 2020 the game against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen sacrificed the queen and then he got that position where he had the rook against the rook and the knight. And the rook and the knight, there is no way these pieces actually can move from there. So this is where Wesley so actually got the very hard lesson and now he used the same motives against Jan Krzysztof Duda. Very, very beautiful. Uh, and uh, for your information, the engine still says, okay, black stands better here, black stands better. But uh, after we make a couple of moves, the engine is not so happy about the position. So this is very interesting. In our game, we have a5. So Duda doesn't want to actually bring the rook, of course, to the game because he would lose the knight. So you see how rooted are these pieces to the, to the corner. Very beautiful. It's very good to know actually this maneuver. Your rook can paralyze, you know, two pieces uh, and then you have a time how to continue the game. Very educa educational game. We have h4, h5, g4 and now a4. So what Duda want to do is paralyze the queen side, these two pawns, so they cannot move now. We have king f2, so of course Wesley so is not in hurry, as this rook actually blocks both of the pieces. So we have king e7, harassing, and now rook g8, saying, okay, uh, if you go to the help the knight, I'm gonna take your pawns here, and you're gonna lose the game. So Duda goes back, king f7, we have rook h8, and now b5. Uh, we have also e4, so uh, Wesley so wants to uh, bring as many pawns to the center and advance as much as possible because the only way uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda actually can try to win that game because he is, you know, one piece, one piece up, uh, but the only way to actually unpin this knight would be bring the knight. So he wants to be with his pawns as far advanced as possible. We have king g7, now we have rook c8, and now king f7. We have g5 now, F takes on g5, 
H takes on G5, so Jan Krzysztof Duda has the protected, actually protected past pawn, uh, but it's very difficult to imagine that this past pawn actually gonna win the game, as the rook is still um, over there in the corner, and it's in the gyal, it's like a lot of freedom, but cannot actually move. So we have king e7, finally Jan Krzysztof Duda said, okay, I set up what I could, and now I go to actually um, for your rook and help my knight. So, uh, in this position we have f4, king d7, rook g8, now going after the pawn, and now king c7. And here, instead of taking the pawn, first we have f5, which is the strongest move in the position. However, Jan Krzysztof Duda still have some resources. Now, it was very important to play rook a6, and now all the fun would actually start. A lot of complicated variations. So, for example, if white actually takes the, takes the pawn, uh, this is rather losing, because after, let's say, rook e6, king uh, e3, then the knight can actually also come to the game, and after, let's say, rook g7, king d6, uh, rook b7, let's say rook g6, this pawn gonna be lost, this pawn uh, is also isolated, uh, so this probably would be, would be actually win for, for black. But what if we take with the rook? So rook g6, according to the engine, actually is winning for black, uh, but only after this first two moves, okay? Because after rook g6, f takes on g6, the engine says, okay, this is rather a draw. Now, how is that draw? Uh, because the knight actually, yes, can stop all the, all the pawns. However, there is the problem. g7, knight e7, and now king g3, uh, and this king go going to go for the, for the pawn, uh, and then support these two pawns. So black have to be with the king around. So for example, king d6, king h4, king e5, and after exchanging these pawns, king h6, king f5, and now it's a very difficult to actually find the way to win. Uh, the king has to go back. Uh, the king cannot g get there. And also, if black decide to go after these pawns, then finally uh, the white will have the time to go to h7, exchange the pawn for the, for the knight, and then another pawn gonna win the game. So uh, that's, that's not even possible. So it, what would have to be played is uh, king, king h5 and, and so on. So that would be rather a draw, the rook g6. Uh, but white has also another way of continuing, rook g7, which is much stronger and also very, very tricky. So now, for example, knight d7, because if the king goes, for, of course, to the d6, then we're gonna have um, the very beautiful skewer, losing the rook and a lot of complications there. Uh, the king could also go to d8, but then gonna be uh, stuck on the 8th rank. So knight d7, and then rook g6 is okay. The, because after rook g6, uh, f takes on g6, this is of course winning for white, because black doesn't have resources to stop the pawn, so this is the huge problem. So now in this variation, actually the rook cannot be taken, cannot be taken, but, but rather something like rook c6. And then after exchanging, believe me or not, but again, this is a draw, king f3, uh, and then king d6, king f4, let's say h4, also very tricky, g6, uh, king e7, and then uh, let's say e5, it looks like white's gonna win, just pick up this pawn, uh, and everything gonna be fine, but it's not so easy, king f8, and what now? Uh, if the king goes to the g4, then this pawn is hanging. And if the pawn is moved, which actually, according to the engine, would be the best move in the position, or you exchange this pawn for this pawn, doesn't really matter, uh, let's say e6, then you have this knight f6. And here is the trickiest way. Actually, you can pause the video and find the only way for white, which is drawing. Drawing move, the only drawing move while I enjoy my cup of tea. So white fights for a draw uh, with this position. So uh, the move we are looking for is actually king g5. And the point is that this pawn cannot run, okay? Because after h3 is losing, king f6, uh, then h2, g7, 
and you already see even you promote then uh, we're gonna have a beautiful checkmate so yeah that's not possible this is why king g7 and we cannot imagine anything now king h4 of course uh, king h6 and uh, e7 king g7 and all is done king g8 knight e8 and now uh this knight gonna just jump between f6 and e8 and um, you cannot do anything um so if white tries also just okay uh white says okay i'm gonna win this pawns and, and gonna win the game it's just too slow because king f4 king f6 so this pawn gonna be lost uh let's say knight c7 now defending so king d4 uh king f5 uh, king c5 king g6 as you see all the pawns gone uh, and this is still on the board so let's say king b6 now uh, knight e8 king b5 king f7 and king e7 b4 uh, king d7 and it's also a theoretical draw the knight can actually be exchanged uh for one or two pawns and yeah that's gonna be also a draw so it was a chance rook a6 but imagine you have two seconds in the in the clock of course you cannot calculate that um, and this is extremely extremely difficult move to find and all the consequences all the lines is just uh, incredible Jan Krzysztof Duda automatically went for g takes on f5 so he want to exchange as many pawns as possible and um, we have e takes on f5 and only now rook a6 so it's pretty much logical also the knight is free now so he freed the, both of the pieces however these pawns are extremely dangerous now and they start to roll we have f6 knight d7 we have f7 so the pawn first pawn is on the seventh rank uh we have rook d6 now we have g6 another pawn is rolling uh rook f6 with check king g3 we have king d6 we have king h4 and now rook f5 and here stop for the moment i would like to just uh, show you this structure because look this is very nice uh, piece synchronization the rook and then and the pawn are extremely well synchronized so the king stays in the cage this is the cage and cannot move because the pawn is actually defended by the rook and the rook controls all of these squares moreover the pawn controls g4 so this is also well-known symbiosis of the of the rook and the pawn and i show you one of the games of akiba rubinstein already i think it was a, against Ossip bernstein the link is over there uh, also uh, in that case Akiba Rubinstein actually uh, draw the game he was in the in the lost position but one of the motives he used was the was the rook and the pawn also a very interesting very educational uh, position however it's lost in this position because now we have rook e8 making a space for the for the pawn so it doesn't really matter your king is is stuck however your pawn gonna win the game so in this case it simply doesn't work we have rook f4 in the game king h5 we have rook f2 king h6 and in this position actually uh Jan Krzysztof Duda lost on time he was on his incrementation he lost on time he tried to actually think where he made a mistake but yeah the mistake was uh, actually here with the f5 move he should go for with the rook a6 but as i said it's it was impossible just to calculate all of this uh complicated variation so yeah this in this position actually uh the time ended and now the problem young Krzysztof duda was losing three points and he just started to um uh, play in the same style or in the equal position then he started to get to the slightly worse positions and then he was losing on time one game another game another game i think it was crashing eight to one in the three minute section and of course in the bullet that was not enough that young Krzysztof duda actually won but uh, by i think it was one point so at the end it was 16 points for wesley so and young Krzysztof duda got 10 points so uh wesley so of course advanced to the to the semi-finals and he gonna play there against the winner of the hikaru nakamura and vladimir fedosiev um pair so um yeah if you learn something from this game i think it was very very educational we could learn at least two tricks two chess tricks and um, and positions uh press like if for some reason you don't like it you didn't learn anything press unlike and 
if you don't want to miss other games from the Speed Chess Championship. Press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.